no bulk selling, wonderful profit margins, and pretty much every build can do it, and the buy-in is flexible. Welcome back, everybody. My name is Wolf. We're going to be showing you the update to the farming strat that I posted just the other day. We have fine-tuned it. However, with this comes the cost of an increasing buy-in. So if you want to check the previous video out, I'll put it in the description box below, as well as a handy grocery list for this version of the tactic. Because right now, the buy-in of this strat with the current market prices, which I've played with the entire day on stream, so you can see the strat life in its entirety as well, is about 700 chaos. Give or take a good snipe left or right, or perhaps a bit more overpaying to make sure you just get something so you can go. But yes, with 700 chaos in buy-in, the profit margin has been 5 to well over 6 divines worth of pure profit with just three sources of currency chaos orbs exalted orbs and vow orbs but there's many more drops we're going to get i just did not count those like tier 17 maps the occasional natural divine scarabs i calculated nothing in terms of the profit for that and you still get those so you're going to make a lot more money than the numbers i just told you if you do it right now i'm going to show you how to do it what you need the the, the actual gameplay a little bit the only thing you have to worry about is that buying the resources if you want to snipe them for better profit margins can be annoying uh, it can take some time and also you still need a good hand it hurts it really does so what do you need for this leveled up farming strat other than a carpal tunnel resistant hand well you're going to need not one but two embers of manifested wealth we're doubling up on them, and there's a good reason for that. Now, make sure they are appropriately leveled. Level 79 and upward is good enough for tier 16. Higher item levels do not matter. 79 simply is the minimal you can hit to make sure you can still apply it to the map, right? This is where also the biggest chunk of your investment goes in. Now, I am assuming 700C, maybe 750, because the prices are very volatile. And yeah, you have to spend about 600 on both of those together. So if you can get a good snipe for sub 300, which is what I always have been trying to do on the stream as well, like 275, 280, it's just pure profit. You're going to feel good about it. In terms of the maps, you want to try to get like a high pack size map. The best for this, however, is a Val Temple because you also are going to get 10 additional guarded Val vessels, which count as strong boxes. Just really, really good value right there. Make sure that whatever map you run, that the mods do not brick your character. You don't want to be a physical character and then have physical reflect, right? Like, that's going to hurt if you don't have a way to reflect immune yourself. And in terms of the scarabs, you want to have the ambush times two. And then you want to get the hidden compartments to make sure you can reopen more frequently. And then you have the scarab of containment. So I'll put this list in the description box as well. But otherwise, if you want to have a shorter buy-in, and you just want to do like a lower level version, you can do like a tier 10 map, get like a nice 72-ish kind of manifested wealth, and you can still make hundreds of chaos with this if you do it right. This is what I was doing prior to growing the strategy into its adult form. But yes, let me grab all of this, and we make sure we can start popping off. So, we're going to put the map in, we're going to put our beloved scarabs in and then we're going to go to ambush that's the craft and then we are simply going to go and activate it and in terms of the all flames we want to make sure that they are connected to high density monsters preferably here we have a high density so we want to make sure we apply that and then here we have unfortunately hit normal that's unfortunate you want double high for the best kind of juice but that's okay a high and normal is more than enough you'll see soon enough as to why that is the case other than that if you want to farm kind of some uh, some corpses and whatnot you may want to contemplate optimizing this this is let's see seven six five let's move this around and then you can kind of go and you are ready to spend the next 30 minutes to an hour in a map farming currency so here is a bit of a gameplay example. This is the very VT map that I just ran. And as you can see, lots of loot on the floor, lots of chaos, lots of good stuff, lots of kind of niche 
potentially valuable items as well, but that's kind of what you have to sort for as you move through the map. And normally what I like to do is I open up a box, clean it up, you know, finish it off, clean it up, move on to the next one when it's done. However, since this is a kind of a showcase, I kind of wanted to make sure that I impress you guys with the amount of loot on the floor. Now, there are a couple of cute things to consider. If you have too much well, loot on the floor, you might not be able to see the dangerous stuff. Also, these are boxes, right? So make sure you move away from them as you open them, because otherwise a nice uh, DD can ruin you or a terrible explosion might take your run. And you're going to need portals to be able to loot. It took me three portals to bring all the loot that I wanted to bring home back with me. On top of that, you see those roly bolies occasionally? Those are the Manifested 12 units, and they roll away from you. They have a special mod that says, I'm terrified of you. So they will run away. So if you have a mid to low range build like I have, sometimes they get away from you, and then you have to pursue them or even search for them so you can finish the damned box that you're trying to finish off. It is, it is a time-consuming process, but if you have a decent like AoE build, some explosions or some range, you'll be more than fine. It's just really if you have a close range build to mid range like I do, depending on where the box spawns. But yes, you can see those white beams as well. Neat little trick, of course, if you press, I believe it is Z, the default button. You can turn off your loot filter if you want to have some clarity. But I believe if you turn off your loot filter with Z and you, you click on those white beams, looting also becomes significantly easier. I'm still trying to figure out a better way of looting this much singular loot in a single map. But other than that, this is kind of what you can expect. Now, we do get a bunch of Exalt Orbs here, even a special Exalted Orbs. I did not count that for the loot, mind you. But you do get those things as well. You can even get a Divine if you're really, really lucky. And this is kind of what you can expect. Just lots of loot, lots of explosions, lots of dopamine, and the occasional frustration because you can't find the one ball that ran away and it ruins the entire experience. So I just finished looting. It took me several trips, but we are here. As you can see, we have a nice loot stash. I did remove all the, the nonsense, like the couple of scours, the chisels, the worthless corruptions, the worthless corrupted maps and all that. And this is what we are left with. Now, we only care about the first three pieces, the chaos, the Val orbs, and the exalted orbs. Everything else beyond this is just extra, right? So don't worry about that. We only care about the first three. It turns out to be... 1,077 Chaos Orbs, 231 Val Orbs, which is nice, and 36 Exalted Orbs. Overall, I would say this is slightly above average. I'm expecting this to be above five, maybe close to six Divines, which is what we have been seeing the entire stream today. I'm going to do some quick calculator power. So let's see, quick flashbang here. Now we know that Exalted Orbs, if you don't sell them in bulk, are about 11 Chaos of Pop. So we have 36 of them. We do times 11, 396. Not bad. Now we have about a divine's worth in Val Orbs. And the divine right now is, I think, 155. So we're going to add 155 to that. And then we're going to add the 1077 to it, which brings us to 1628 total chaos worth of just raw juice right there. Give or take the Val Orbs. Now we're going to divide this, or at least first subtract 700 from this, because that's kind of what our investment was. And then we're going to subtract it by the current divine price, which is 155 at the time of this recording, which ends up being 5.98 divines, which is not bad. Give or take some conversion rate and some fluctuation in the market. That is well over five and a half divines worth of value on this map alone from those three pieces. But... They are not the only three pieces. We also have an Eldritch Chaos Orb, which is like another 50, 60 Chaos or so. We also have a nice 8 map in case you want to bulk sell those. We have some clean maps in case you want to bulk sell those. I personally don't really care. We did hit a tier 17 map. So that's a nice, what is this? 60, 70 Chaos, maybe more, depending on the time of day, which is nice. We also hit a Val Temple. Unfortunately, this is a kind of low rolled one. So this is like 30 Chaos, 40 Chaos if you're lucky. Still, though, it adds up. We have a bunch of, like, all flame stuff. Nothing really good. We have some sun artifacts, quality, a lot of quality gems. We even got an anarchy, but, yeah, they crashed completely from 2 divine to 20 chaos. Less even, by the looks of it, now 15 chaos. Tragic. Also, the, uh, the influenced ones seem to be working again. They seem to be unbugged, I've been told. So maybe start collecting those for a pretty penny. 
or maybe some influence craft who knows and then we also have like a double corrupt this is the only one that might have some decency for some people maybe i don't know i typically just throw them in my dump tap and see if anybody wants it and as you can see same here we have some double corrupted jewels but we didn't hit anything specific no corrupted blood no phasing no life but yes as you can see though but just the three pieces alone we have made our investment back made a made a hell of a profit and all it took us was a little bit of sanity some physical health and some time it is not going to break any kind of world records in terms of farming strats because it does take quite a bit a reasonable build can take about half an hour per map that's two maps an hour let's say this was a lucky map let's say that an average map is five div an hour it's about 10 div an hour i mean that seems about very that seems very reasonable right and i'm still trying to figure out how to improve this which brings me to the atlas tree this is the exact atlas tree we just ran into the map with just a heads up though no eldritch altars there's two reasons for that not only are the manifested wealth units a special type that drop a currency based on who they are so if they look like a chaos orb they will drop a chaos orb and you can't scale that with quantity or rarity you have to scale that with pack size and on top of that the containment scarab the big one that we are using for this particular strat pretty much prevents or significantly nerfs altars from being able to be spawned because the units that spawn them are pretty much gone 99 percent of the time so it's not worth the point investment and you certainly won't see a good return on that so that's why we're not using eldritch altars we want more pack size so having that said we have the usual suspects we have strong boxes we have the reopen nodes of course I do want to respec into concealed logistics, but we're going to have to cut something for that, but more about that later. We are going to run shrines as well, because shrines are not only just quality of life with speed and power, but they also get placed into the map with units that we then get to benefit from as they take the map units, and the map units are, of course, most of the time are manifested wealth, which means more money. It's a whole cascading effect. So we are using the three points on the top right here, to get additional shrine chance 60 percent we're not picking up all that glitters because quantity and rarity doesn't make any sense for us and then with the notes down here for another 40 40 plus 60 is 100 with the man uh, the supplication right there guarantees two shrines at the very least very good on top of that we have a bunch of blocks because if they can't put any league mechanics on the map they have to force the ones that can be put onto the map like boxes so we have more chance of getting more natural boxes in addition to the ones we are forcing very very good if i had the two points that i'm still missing i would be blocking straight and narrow as well as black thumb so if you do have those points just block everything and go to town on top of that we have the imperial raves for higher ranks as well as devout pursuit because there are some really good mods that allow for massive spikes in value like there's a pack size one 50 pack size increase on your manifested wealth on a high density oh yes your hand's gonna hurt but it's gonna be real good it's gonna be real good we also pick up some all flame here this is a desperate attempt to get some more value out of the map and maybe find our own manifested wealth i've only found one this entire league which is insane for the record insanely bad and then we have eternal torment just for more rare chance because i was trying to farm some scarabs and I'm thinking about cutting scarabs. Scarabs do not seem to be worth the investment in terms of points for the return we are getting with this particular strat. But yes, if you do want to get scarab and hope to maybe sustain ambush scarabs, you want to pick up amplified artifacts, you want to pick up remarkable relics, you want to pick up the skittering swarm, and then of course you want to go and pick up trapping catapuses at least for the ambush, and then you want to maybe pick up a harbinger because harbinger scarabs are just very good in terms of value and bulk selling but then you have to do bulk selling and that's up to you uh we do have some weird travel notes just for explicit modifiers we also pick up the chiseled perfection in case you chisel your own maps this is good for like doing tier 8 maps that are rolled otherwise you don't need this point because we're not chiseling our val temples unless you know your val temple has been chiseled which is a bit of a tricky thing to figure out so if you want to be safe don't worry about it um you can just remove that or keep it in case you do get lucky with the chiseled one on top of that we have some map sustain this allows us to get more maps more corrupted maps 
uh, which is a greater chance for tier 17 drops or Val Temple drops if they happen, as well as just natural clean maps you can sell in bulk. Um, and if we have concealed logistics, which is what I'm going to tech in in spite of or instead of Scarabs, as well as Nico, I think, there's just a lot of value to be had in terms of maps there. Or don't forget significant troves because every uh, Val Temple strong box or the Val Vessel will have a exiled uh, person in there which can drop a scarab so that if you want to farm scarabs in, in Val temples this is a really powerful node but yes i am thinking about dropping scarabs and picking up some forced nico because that allows me to pick up the price of progress again like i was running before which allows me to get the extra free box occasionally which will respect the mods on the atlas tree and they do oftentimes of course have the manifested wealth so it's an extra box so I think I might just do that. Plus, we can then run Pact with Energy, which also allows us to move faster. And that's going to help speed up the map a little bit. Because it is very frustrating to get around otherwise. But yes, having that said, though, I'm just like brainstorming for the future. This is just the Atlas tree that we have. Um, run this. If you don't want to run Scarabs, try to pick up Nico and Concealed Logistics. That's it. That's pretty much the too long, didn't read version. Hopefully this helps. Go forth. Ruin your hand, and I will see you guys on the other side. Thank you so much for watching. I'm out.